Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Howard Zemsky. I have the honor of serving as uh, Governor Cuomo's Commissioner of Economic Development and President and CEO of Empire State Development. And I've had the uh, pleasure and privilege of uh, being part of a historic trade mission to Cuba recently, along with Drs. Johnson and Lee, two newly minted celebrities here in Buffalo. <laughs> Unbelievable. It was, uh, I have to say, it was uh, quite an amazing trip. Um, and congratulations to everyone at Roswell for this collaboration. And I will spare you my trying to uh, explain the collaboration to the experts. I will not, uh, in just a while, introduce uh, Dr. Johnson and she'll introduce Dr. Lee to talk more about the, um, the uh, collaboration. But I want to say a few things. Um, about Global New York and the governor's global initiative and just a couple of things about the uh, trip itself before I turn it over to the, uh, to the experts. You know, the world is a big place and America and New York in particular provided opportunity to people um, for a very long time. Uh, my family is fourth generation New Yorkers now uh, my grandparents came here a hundred years ago, and I know many of you have similar experiences, and we provided all kinds of opportunity, economic opportunity for so many people. The world has changed a lot in a hundred years, and it's gotten a lot bigger, and 92% of the world's economic growth now happens outside of our borders. 95% of the population lives outside our borders, and uh, it's a great opportunity for this state which excels in so many areas. And I want to talk about just a couple of those areas. Um, we are number one in international tourism, number one in the country. We welcome over 14 million international visitors a year. Uh, we are number two in international students, over 100,000 international students to our institutions of higher learning in New York State. Um, we are number three in foreign direct investment. That's, that alone supports over 400,000 jobs in New York State. And we export in New York $86 billion of goods and services. So the global economy for New York State already supports about 15% of our uh, economy, which is well over a million jobs. So it's a great opportunity. We have great strengths, as you can tell, in all these areas. We lead the country in many of them. We're in the top four in all of them. And they're all an important part of our go forward strategy for growing jobs and investment in New York through the global footprint uh, that we have. Before, um, I want to talk a little bit about Cuba itself. Um, it was, we are the first state to lead a mission to Cuba and once you're first, you're always first. It meant a lot to the Cubans. No one can ever be first ahead of us anymore. And it meant a lot. I mean, I have to tell you just uh, my own personal observations, having uh, spent a, you know, a lot of time in a short time with the Cubans that we were with, uh, it was very meaningful to them. And New York means a lot, uh, our history, uh, means a lot, and the support of the governor meant a lot. Uh, it continues to build on the momentum uh, and the pr President Obama's um, decision to normalize uh, relations in December, his recent meeting with Raul Castro, his recommendation to lift um, the uh, to lift the uh, take them off, take Cuba off the list of uh, state-sponsored terrorist countries, and of course. Uh, the president's stated objective of uh, removing the embargo, and of course the Cubans are very hopeful that the embargo gets lifted. You can just sense the uh, optimism. Uh, it's uh, been a long, uh, I think, uh, hard road uh, for Cuban people. And putting aside for a moment all the remarkable historical events that have been part of the U.S.-Cuban relationship, um, you know, when you're with people, and this won't surprise you, they're, they're people, right? I mean, you could relate to them no different than you could relate to any other people um, that you meet. And they're just, they have aspirations for themselves, for their families, and uh, of course, economic aspirations are an important part of realizing that. So uh, it was 
amazing trip that way. Uh, the number of sectors that were represented on the trip um, included uh, transportation. JetBlue was there. They are very eager to provide um, regular service to Cuba. It's clear to what the trajectory of the relationship is and the opportunity that was there. They met with the ministers of uh, travel and tourism. Uh, the Plattsburgh Airport in New York was there. They, as as I was there, and uh, wearing a few different hats, but as chair of NFTA, we do a lot of business here in a Western New York uh, with Canadians. The more destinations that we can support uh, to the Caribbean, to Cuba, and elsewhere, the more business we do with um, with Canadians. And of course, the Plattsburgh Airport was represented on the trade mission. They'd love to do more business with Canadians as well. Not so much Torontonians, but you know, folks from Montreal uh, it's, and from the province of Quebec. So they see the opportunity, JetBlue sees the opportunity. Uh, there have been some restrictions lifted on travel. Uh, there have been some restrictions lifted on financial services and things of that nature. It's very difficult, if not impossible, to use a credit card in Cuba right now. MasterCard was on their trip. They were enthused and excited by the time that they spent with their Minister of Finance in Cuba, and then with the central bank the next day, they are eager to pursue opportunities in Cuba. Uh, the dairy products were represented, Chobani and Cayuga milk ingredients. They buy a lot of uh, powdered milk in Cuba, so opportunities for New York State companies in dairy. Uh, nice, really nice gentleman with a, who was CEO of a company called Infor, Enterprise Software for Healthcare Institutions. He uh, found a distributor in Cuba who wants to sell his software products, and uh, as he said, they inked the deal over some rice and beans the next night. So um, it was great. SUNY was there, and I mentioned the important role of international students and how important it is for our students to have these multicultural collaborations. So um, from all respects, uh, I think it was an amazing trip. Every person who went on that trip all of the delegates from our side, from the New York side, uh, and um, Candace and Kelvin will confirm this, were so proud to have participated and found their time so extremely worthwhile. And everybody um, has initiatives that they're working on and opportunities that they see. It's just that your amazing team of uh, doctors Johnson and Lee got there first. So they set the, uh, the, the, the model for everyone else on the delegation, but everyone is uh, proud to participate with the governor in this. It was a proud moment for me personally. ESD was involved uh, in the planning and implementation. It was proud for everyone to be uh, on a trip like this. It was uh, quite something. And um, with that, uh, I will turn it over to your uh, beloved Dr. Candace Johnson. Thank you very much. So Howard's correct. It was. It really was um, a very special trip, and I was. I was just so proud and pleased to be a part of it. Uh, thank Governor Cuomo for uh, the kind invitation. It was uh, really a pleasure, and you all would be very proud. Kelvin and I represented this institution very, very um, positively. It was. Um, you know, our relationship with Cuba goes back to 2011 where um, we had, uh, it, it is always, you know, many of you maybe don't know this, I used to be an immunologist way, way back when, and I knew of the immunology strength that has always been in Havana. They've always had very strong immunology. Some of them left Havana to come to Miami uh, Beach, and there's still a, a strong a group of them there. But so we reached out to them. There were a number of faculty in this audience that had had some, been to Cuba and had some investigations with them. And this really started a collaboration, but this was much like other scientific collaborations where our scientists would go there for meetings, uh, international meetings that they would host. We would have their scientists and physicians stop by when they were in the States here at Roswell Park. We exchanged some graduate students. But really, we were just sort of chatting about uh, research collaborations and things that maybe we could potentially do together. And this trade mission really offered us the opportunity to sort of jumpstart uh, us doing some very uh, important work to bring a vaccine that is being produced in Cuba uh, to help patients here in Western New York. 
Calvin will give you a little bit more details about the vaccine, but uh, you know, the Cuban uh, scientists are so innovative, and in fact, they talk about this. They don't have a lot of big equipment and money like we do here in the States. So they have to be, as they've said, well, I don't know what the, uh, Tanya says, we have to be smarter because we don't have enough money for anything else, so we have to be more innovative. So they have been very ingenious in the design of these cancer vaccines that they have. I mean, sometimes when they explain to you sort of how they got to where they are now, you think, geez, how innovative. Why didn't we think of this? And so they've had to sort of use uh, different ways to come to the end. And so they have a vaccine called Simovax that is a vaccine against a growth factor. And it's a growth factor that when it's produced, it causes tumor cells to grow. And in lung cancer, and, and this vaccine, we're going to use it in lung cancer, but it has applications in other cancers as well but it stops the production of this growth factor and hence stops the, produ the, the growth of these tumor cells, a very uh, different property than many other uh, drugs that are out there. They've had success, treated over 1,000 patients in Cuba, uh, folks with lung cancer, and seen a significant increase in survival. But the real innovation and beauty about this is this vaccine is produced cheaply and it's non-toxic. And so a non-toxic vaccine could have implication in prevention. And in prevention, it could have two uses. I'm probably stealing your thunder, but that's okay. It's okay. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> he's used to it. Um, <laughs> but um, it could, uh, folks that have early stage lung cancer, they get their tumors excised or removed by surgery, and then, uh, but recurrence statistically show that these folks are going to get recurrence of their disease. So prevention of recurrence in that setting may be very appropriate for this vaccine. And then think about all the folks that are at heavy, high risk for lung cancer, and this is something Mary Reed's been very interested in. I don't know if Mary's in the audience, but these are heavy smokers, uh, COPD, uh, folks that have asbestos, asbestos exposure. Um, using this sort of agent as a preventative measure may play a huge role. Think about this around the world. Uh, so we're very excited about this. Uh, this wouldn't have happened without me sitting face to face. I had the one that had to sign the document uh, to get this moving. And what we signed was an agreement. Uh, we brought back information. It was an agreement to move forward to file an IND with our FDA. So we have the information that we brought back from uh, the Center for Molecular Immunology, and we will take uh, and prepare an IND, go to the FDA, and then we'll, we will be allowed to give this vaccine. It will be produced in Cuba and give this vaccine to patients here in the U.S. So this wouldn't have happened without this trade mission. It all sort of came together, and um, it, was, it was really a it was such a pleasure to be a part of this really historic trip for all of us. And, um, and then I will let you speak. Um, the other really important thing is there were individuals from Pfizer there. Um, a very, uh, the medical director of Pfizer was there, an, a delightful woman. And, and then uh, also the New York Genome Center, Bob Darnell, who we know very well. And they were there uh, as well. And the collaborations that we were all talking about, even related to this vaccine, are really priceless. And that may not have happened if we hadn't all been in the same room uh, together. So uh, it, it's, it was a phenomenal experience. And we're all looking forward to the future for this. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Dr. Kelvin Lee. He's the Jacob uh, Family Ch Chair of Immunology. <laughs> So I don't think Candace has lost much, much of her immunology, even though she purports herself to be a pharmacologist. <laughs> and uh, to, just to touch on uh, uh, the commissioner's comment about celebrity, so we were flying back last night, and you know this was after hours and hours on the plane, and you know we were a little bit worse for the wear, and we're walking out, uh, out, in, out of the secure area, secure area in the airport, and I see there are you know two news cameras out there with two reporters. And my first thought was, oh, Rex Ryan must be on the plane. I walk out, I'm walking right by them, and Candace says, you gotta stop and stay also. And they're chasing her. They're going, Dr. Johnson, Dr. Johnson. It was like, wow, what does this all happen? So it was, it was a, a, as 
Howard and Candace said, it was a fantastic trip. And, and, and uh, great thanks to Howard's staff, the governor's staff. Uh, this was an undertaking of tremendous, uh, you know, tremendous effort, and it went off uh, phenomenally well. And I also would like to thank all the Roswell faculty and staff that really have worked over these years uh, developing the trust and the interactions with the Center for Molecular Immunology to make this all happen. So thank you guys. You guys did all really the, the hard lifting. So we are really excited about this vaccine. As Candace uh, mentioned, it is very unique. It's probably the only vaccine like it in the world. It targets not the cancer cells, but it targets an essential growth factor that cancer cells need. It essentially starves the cancer cell. The exciting thing about it is that it is very inexpensive to make. It is very easy to give. They just give a shot in, a, in your shoulder once a month, so your pharmacist at Rite Aid could do this. It is incredibly low toxicity. There are very few side effects for it. So that, those characteristics really make it not only very exciting to treat things like lung cancer, but also very exciting to do prevention. So in the context of somebody that is at high risk to get lung cancer, this is the vaccine to go and try to reduce that risk. And it's not only useful in lung cancer, it's potentially useful in that whole class of cancers that includes head and neck cancer, breast cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, pancreatic cancer. So there is tremendous potential to use this in other, other kinds of cancer. So we're very excited about that. And this vaccine fits in very nicely with the mission uh, of immunotherapy that is being headed up by the Center for Immunotherapy and Dr. Uh, Kunle Odunsi's group. It fits very nice with our efforts to harness the immune system uh, to fight cancer. And so we think for this vaccine, this trip, on the agreements that were signed, uh, and with the governor's help and uh, commissioner's help, we are going to be able to take this vaccine forward, get it through the FDA. There will be challenges, as one might guess, as being either, either the first or second uh, investigational new, new drug application that's been applied with a Cuban, a Cuban biotech product. But this is not the first one. Uh, this is not the only one. This is the first one, but not the only one, because the Center for Molecular Immunology has another great vaccine that works really well in lung cancer, as well as a number of really innovative biotech products uh, that they've tested in Cuban patients in large clinical trials that, uh, that appear to have remarkable efficacy in, in cancer, as well as a number of other things that are, are, are applicable to atherosclerotic heart disease and, uh, and other diseases like that. So we think that this is the first, and we like being the first. We want to be on the leading edge of getting this done. We think that this is a, a great Roswell Park tradition, and, but it's not the last. We will see more of these come through, and I think that will be great uh, for our patients in Western New York, patients in the state of New York, the U.S. patients, and worldwide. So with that, thank you. Turn it back over to Commissioner Zemsky. Thanks, Kelvin. I'm just going to wrap up real quick. Um, yeah, we are, uh, Kelvin uh, identifies in this relationship, we are keenly aware that it's a new and emerging relationship, mm -hmm. an opportunity, and uh, the rules are being rewritten uh, as we go. Uh, but when you think about it, the Dominican Republic, uh, close to Cuba and very similarly sized in population, uh, we do in New York a quarter billion dollars of business. In Cuba, we do about a quarter million dollars of business. There's a lot of opportunity. We are there to build relationships, to plant seeds, uh, and to you know, cultivate that, those relationships and communications uh, over time. Uh, we totally get that. Uh, that's why we went. It's a big opportunity. It's only 90 miles from the U.S. So, Anyway, it was, a, again, a pleasure and an honor. Thank you all for being here, uh, and thank you to Roswell, and congratulations again for all that you do and all that you did in Cuba. Thank you.